In this video, we'll explore the relationship between knowledge uncertainty and natural variability. Buoys located in waterways routinely collect water temperature data. These gauges measure the daily peak temperature of water at a given location in degrees Celsius. Now imagine that you're building a model, and one of the inputs you need is the daily peak temperature at a specific location on the Gulf of Mexico on a random summer day sometime in the future. If asked to provide this value, your first response would be something like, I have no idea what that would be. And why not? Well, first, the temperature changes from day to day, so there's natural variability that we must account for. Second, presuming you have never seen this specific location, you don't know if this is a very hot location, a more temperate one, a well-shaded one, and so on. So there's some knowledge uncertainty we must account for as well. Estimating this value as a single number is not going to do. A single number ignores natural variability, and our knowledge of uncertainty is so great, we would not know what size single number to use. So we'll use a distribution to represent the natural variability. Thankfully, a friend has just told us to use the normal distribution so we don't have to worry about what distribution to use. Let's take a look at a normal distribution using at risk. So I place my cursor over here in the cell. I'm going to go up here to define distributions. And this opens up to a palette with the continuous random variables selected. So I'm going to scroll down looking for the normal distribution. I find it here, double click, and a default distribution shows up. Here we see a distribution that's single peak and symmetrical. This means that days below the mean temperature are as likely as, as days above the mean temperature, and this seems quite reasonable to us. Notice the parameters of the normal distribution. They include a mean and a standard deviation. So they're the values we must estimate. If we knew the mean and the standard deviation, we could just plug them in and then the resulting distribution would show us the natural variability that exists in peak daily summer temperatures at this location on the Gulf. But we have a problem, however, because we don't know anything about the location. There is a true mean of the peak daily temperature during summer at this location, but this is a fact that we just do not know. So we're going to have to estimate it. Instead of estimating the mean as a single value, we can reflect our knowledge uncertainty about the mean by estimating it as a value between 20 and 25 degrees using a uniform distribution to convey our belief. So let's put the cursor in cell D4, go to define distributions, we come up with the same palette. I scroll down, find the uniform distribution, and we remember that the default parameters are not going to be the values that we need, so we'll put a 20 in for the minimum, a 25 in for the maximum. And now we have a normal distribution that represents our knowledge uncertainty about the mean temperature at this unknown location. The choice of a uniform distribution means any value between 20 and 25 degrees is as likely as any other value. Likewise, we're going to estimate the standard deviation as a uniform distribution. Using the same palette, we find the uniform distribution. And this time we're going to use a minimum of 3 degrees and a maximum of 7 degrees. We don't know what the variation in temperature is going to be, so we're making our own educated guesses. This is our belief about what these values would be. Letting these two values vary creates a normal distribution each time. So let me put my cursor in here 
go up to define distributions. I'm going to select the normal again. This time I'm going to use the assigned Excel references. I click on this. I identify my mean as the value in cell D4 and my standard deviation as the value in D5. I'm finished entering parameters so I click on the icon and it brings me back here where we can see now I have a normal distribution with a mean that's about 23 degrees and a standard deviation of 3.6 degrees. So I'm okay with that and I will close. Now notice here we have a mean of 22.9 a standard deviation of 3.6 and the chosen value is 28.2. This is a value that was selected randomly from a normal distribution with this mean and this standard deviation. When I recalculate, here we have a new mean and a new standard deviation and a new value that's been selected. So a single value of 28.1 degrees was randomly selected from this distribution. And please notice that the chosen value is not the actual mean, which was 24.4 degrees. So let's identify this as an output. A normal distribution with knowledge uncertainty natural variability works. We'll say OK. And now we're going to run a simulation with 100,000 iterations. So we select 100,000, start the simulation, and we first initialize the model. And then very shortly, the simulation will begin to run. And now, as we see the results beginning to appear, Notice that the results look like a normal distribution, and they have a mean of 22.5 and a standard deviation of 5.3. So what happened was we selected 100,000 pairs of means and standard deviations to get 100,000 different normal distributions from each of those 100,000 normal distributions, a single value was selected. That single value was collected here, and that process was repeated 100,000 times. So the distribution that you are looking at is a number that includes both knowledge uncertainty and natural variability. In other words, both sources of uncertainty occur at once. It has knowledge uncertainty because there are two facts we lack data about, the mean and the standard deviation. These values are constants, but we estimated them with intervals and a uniform distribution. So imagine that we were not happy with this situation, and we do some research and learn the location and buoy number. And then we find thousands of data points. Ignore any concerns you have about climate change for the moment in order to keep this example simple. So if we calculate the mean and the standard deviation for these thousands of data points, we can eliminate the knowledge uncertainty. So we've done that now. The mean is 23.7 degrees, and the standard deviation is 3.2 degrees. So let's create a normal distribution using these two values. We come back to our sheet, and here where we have natural variability only, I'm going to say, for the mean, please find that on sheet 2 in cell G3, and the standard deviation Please find that on sheet 2 in cell G4. And now we're going to create another normal distribution. 
just as we did before. Selecting the normal distribution, using the Excel references. And we say OK. We're going to identify this as an output as well. And the default normal distribution with natural variability only, that works quite well. So we have a mean now with the we have a normal distribution with a fixed mean of 23.7 and a fixed standard deviation of 3.2. However, notice that each time we recalculate, we get a different value. Each day has a different peak daily temperature. So we're going to run a simulation of 100,000 iterations again. And we begin. Now we have two different normal distributions, one with knowledge, uncertainty, and natural variability, which you're looking at, and one with just natural variability. So we're going to be able to compare them by running this simulation. So notice the model result here. This is for the original distribution, which has knowledge uncertainty and natural variability. Unhappy with that situation, imagine that we did some research, which means spending some money to gather data, and we eliminated our knowledge uncertainty. So I'm going to add an overlay to the graph. So I click on this little blue and red icon down here at the bottom. It says, where is that distribution? I can find it here in E7. OK. And here's what we see. So here you see our original distribution in red and we overlay the natural variability distribution in blue. Notice how they differ. First, consider the means. The red distribution seems to be centered farther to the left than the blue distribution. The mean down here and the red distribution, the mean is a little bit further to the left. The natural variability only distribution centers over the true value. The other distribution does not because we were guessing at the parameter values. The original distribution has much more variation in it because it reflects knowledge uncertainty and natural variability. But let me take a short digression here. The knowledge uncertainty and natural variability distribution, the red distribution, is wider in this case. But could it ever be narrower? And the answer is yes. If we underestimated our knowledge uncertainty, perhaps by using a single value for the mean, and if we underestimated the natural variability, perhaps by using a standard deviation that was too small, we could have come up with a situation where the original red distribution is narrower than the blue distribution. So please understand, I've set this example up so the natural variability and the knowledge uncertainty distribution, the red, looks wider. But that's not what has to happen. So you will see that there is a great deal more probability of low values occurring with the red distribution. In fact, there look to be some values with the red distribution that are not possible with the blue distribution. The same can be said on the high side, although there is not a symmetry there. Notice also this blue distribution indicates a greater likelihood of values in this range between 20 and perhaps 26 or 27, but those values are, are much more likely as well.
So we began with the red distribution, and if we had inserted that into our model, there would be times when it produced temperatures that were too high or too low. So we did some research, which usually means spending more money, to eliminate the knowledge uncertainty. This left us with a more precise, that is a narrower, estimate of the peak daily temperature as seen by the blue distribution here. So here are a few takeaways. It can get confusing when trying to describe the cause of uncertainty because sometimes you can have both sources for a single value. Other times there is only knowledge uncertainty such as when we estimated the mean and standard deviation. Here we had knowledge uncertainty about these two values. Here there is no knowledge uncertainty. We know what these values are. They were calculated using data. Finally, we may have values where all the relevant facts, like the mean and standard deviation, are known, but we still have natural variability. So if you find all of this confusing, that makes you normal. But with some careful thought, you can learn to distinguish between knowledge uncertainty, natural variability, and then to even differentiate those situations where you have a little of both.